y'all. Come on. Hope all y'all having a good day so far. Good morning. Hope y'all got some rest. Very needed. <laughs> I feel like, oh man, I'll be going to sleep like seven, eight o'clock. I ain't going front sometime. I'll be getting up early. <laughs> Listen to the radio and stuff. <laughs> it's all good. I enjoy my time. I'm going to enjoy my time. Tell y'all, like I say all the time, I ain't perfect. I fall short each and every single day. Bible say we claim to be without sin. We deceive ourselves. Paul said, all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. Especially this brother right here. A blessed God who look past all of my faults and look past all yours too. His mercy is new every morning. Every morning his mercy is new. And first up. Uh, Give a praise to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, my Father in heaven, and the sweet Holy Spirit. And all praise and honor and glory to go to them. Uh, Got to say that first, second of all. I know y'all seen that Tom Brady game. <laughs> Come crazy. Y'all mess me up. It is what it is, though. <laughs> I ain't going to speak too much on that. I'm just going to dive on in like I always do. Yeah. You know, we all uh, been wounded somehow, somewhere. Now, excuse me, sir. I got to get my mind right. I ain't even drunk my coffee yet. It is what it is. We ain't in no rush. We're going to get there. It is y'all called Wounds of a Friend. You know, we all got people around us and stuff. And quite often, I know myself, I always keep a close eye on things because I know I mess up all the time and it be people who ain't going to tell you what you need to hear. Instead, they tell you what you want to hear. Like if I'm messing up and I got stuff going on, like most people don't like to be told about themselves. And I ain't saying just go tell people about themselves, like point out every single other thing. No, I don't do it that way, but it's a way to do it, do it in love. But, uh, it's good to have people around tell you things you need to hear, not what you want to hear. I got a whole lot of people tell me what I want to hear, and they'll tell me what I want to hear all the way to the grave. <laughs> they'll tell me what I want to hear all the way to jail. <laughs> they'll tell me what I want to hear here <laughs> all the way <laughs> till I'm sitting on the side of the road somewhere looking crazy. But it's them people who tell you what you need to hear. Like, where it, you might not like it, but you do appreciate it. Trust, I had people tell me, uh, I got a bud who cut my head. I owe the guy's name, Jeff. <laughs> uh, bless you, bro. Uh, he was talking to me one day about a, a certain situation, and I wasn't paying no attention to him. Yeah, I was listening to him and everything. I wasn't trying to hear what this dude was trying to tell me. <laughs> like, where? Like, where? He, everything he was telling me was the truth, but I wasn't trying to listen to him. I can tell you. <laughs> I went back to him, like, it was a couple weeks later. I was like, bro, I had to apologize to him. Because I wasn't listening to him. And like, I knew I wasn't listening to him. Like, where? But I needed to hear what he was telling me. You see what I'm saying? It went in one end out the other that day, but it stuck in. I heard what he said. Where? It's good to have people around to tell you things that you uh, that you need to hear, not just what you want to hear. You'll notice those people if you pay attention. Like, where? They're good to have around, man. Right. It's John called Wounds of a Friend. I love this. Proverbs 27, verse 6. Brother Solomon wrote, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Amen. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Yeah. I love that. Not many friends will wound you, hurt you, say something to you you don't like. But watch this. My favorite is to step on your toes to hurt your feelings. Not out of anger or hate, but out of love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. The best things in life has happened from being wounded by a friend. There is no one more faithful than the Lord our God who sent the Son Jesus Christ to give us the Holy Spirit. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. I love when the Lord brings me down. It's only to set me up on high, especially if I'm not living in accordance to his word. 
might hurt, but he'll heal me. Amen. <laughs> I believe the word say his arm, the Lord, he wounds, but he heals also. Yeah. The Lord chastised, the Lord chastises his children. Job chapter five, verses seventeen through nineteen. Eliphaz told Eliphaz said, Eliphaz told Brother Job, Therefore do not despise the chastise the chastising of the Almighty, for he makes sore and binds up, for he wounds and his hands make hold. He shall deliver you and he shall deliver you from six troubles. Yeah, even seven, there should no evil touch you. Amen. Psalms 147, verses 2 through 3, Brother David said, The Lord do build up Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts out of Israel. He heals the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. Amen. Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, Brother Hosea said, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, <laughs> but he will heal us. He has injured us. But he will bind us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us that we may live in his presence. Let us acknowledge the Lord and let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that move, that rain, that like the spring rains that water the earth. Psalms 116, verses 5 through 9, Brother David said, Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yet yeah. our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought down low, and he helped me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountiful with you. For he has delivered your soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Brother David said he was brought down low, and the Lord helped him. King David was a man of the God's own heart. I know if Brother David can get down low. Anybody can. The Lord brought David down only to bring him up and place him on the rock. The rock. Amen. Brother Job was brought down low. Brother Job cursed the day he was born. He even questioned God. He even questioned the Lord's judgment. He even said this in Job chapter 6 verses 8 through 10. Oh that, oh, that I might have my request that God will grant what I hope for, that God will be willing to crush me, to let loose his hand and cut off my life. The BSB version is saying, it still brings me, in verse 10, it says, it still brings me comfort and joy through my unrelenting pain that I have not denied the word to the Holy One. Job was going through some in Job chapter 13, verse 15. Brother Job said, though he slay me, yet I'm a hope in him. Job 19, verses 25 through 27, Brother Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Bless you, Brother Job. Brother Job repented in the end and got double for his trouble. Good and he was a good and faithful servant. One of my favorites is when the Lord brought down Brother uh, Hezekiah in 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 7. I got the jump. I got to read that jump. And yeah, this dude got sick. It's saying uh, 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Hezekiah was sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Set your house in order, for you should die and not live. Then brother Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Lord, I beg you, remember now how I walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart, and I've done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And it came to pass, right as Isaiah was leaving out the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. This is what the Lord says, the God of David, your father. I have heard your prayer and I seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. And on the third day, you should go up to the house of the Lord. And I will add 15 years to your life. And I will deliver and I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of his area. And I will defend the city for my own sake, for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. And they took it and laid it on the bowl. And he recovered. 
Brother Isaiah, uh, brother Hezekiah was brought down low. And Jeremiah said in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 19 through 29. Y'all bear with me. And Jeremiah chapter Jeremiah said, remember my affliction in Jeremiah in Lamentations chapter three, verse 19. The brother said, remember my, I remember my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the wormwood and the God. My soul has them in remembrance and is humble within me. But I call this to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It's because of the Lord's mercy that we not consume because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I'm going to hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait on him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that a man both hope and it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke of his youth. He that sits alone and keeps and keeps silent because he has laid it on him. He puts his mouth on the dust so that there may be hope. Yeah. The Lord won't cast off forever. Verse 11. And sometimes uh, the Lord brings us down, man. Only lifts us, lifts us up. It's good to have people around that's going to tell you what you need to hear. You got to go back to the beginning, seeing what I said at the beginning. If you just tuning in, it's talking about. Uh, it's good to have people around you that's going to tell you what you need to hear, and not what you want to hear. Because right, them people that tell you what you want to hear, they're going to tell you what you want to hear, right? To jail or to the graveyard or to somewhere you don't want to be. They see you living a certain way. they let you keep on living a certain way. they they talk your ear and tell you what you want to hear. Like, where? But there's some people that tell you what you need to hear. You might not like it at the time. I had people tell me a whole lot of things. They ain't like at the time. <laughs> but where? I needed to hear it, though. And I bless, I bless them people. Yeah. You got to go to the beginning and read what I said at the beginning. It'll make sense. I hope y'all having a good morning, Doug. You're having a good week. I know things ain't perfect. It's hard. Sometimes I don't feel like doing nothing. Be them days, man. Trust and believe, man. Nah, be them days. It gets me too. Man, you can't have daytime without nighttime. There's going to be some problems and troubles and stuff that's uh, always be there. Even for myself, Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 33, in this world, you're going to have many troubles. <laughs> word. That's for people who save. I can imagine the people who ain't holding on. Like, word. Even people who save got problems, man. Bless the Lord. He's going to make a way. He's going to make a way. He's going to make a way. I got another joke for y'all, dude. Uh, yeah, I can kick you. I can kick you. This John called, uh, remember the law. Matter of fact, I'm going to read this, Trump. I like this. We don't understand why things happen sometimes. Some things don't make sense. We wonder why uh, We wonder why things happen. Where some things don't make sense on this side of the field. But bear with me. This should make sense. I don't know why, but it's on my mind to read this, Trump. Uh... I like the NIV version. I got I'm reading from the King James version of my book. Like I, that John makes sense to me. Like to somebody who knew, you want to start off with the new international version because it reads more clear. Like it just it'll it'll help you make sense <clears throat> more than uh, a lot of other versions. I'm gonna read from the NIV version. In uh John chapter nine, it was a man who was born blind. Starting from verse one. It said, as he went along, he saw a man who was born blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus said, no one sinned. <clears throat> but this happened so that the work of God may be displayed. As long as it's daytime, we must do the works to him who sent me. Night is coming. He said, night is coming when no one can work. While I'm in the world, I'm I'm the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground and made some mud with saliva and put it on the man's eyes and told him, go, wash in the pool of Shalom. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing his neighbors and those who had formerly seen him beg, uh, seen him beg and asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit in bed? Some claimed that he used to be. Others said, nah, it only looks like him. 
but he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open? They asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put on my eyes. <laughs> and he told me to go to Salome and wash. So I went and I washed and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. So the Pharisees had the man brought in who was blind. Now, now that day on which D Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him, how did you receive your sight? He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But I, but I was said, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man and said, what you got to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight. So they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked, is this the one you say was born blind? And how was it now that he see? His parents said, we know that this is our son. And we know he was born blind. But how he see now? Or who opened his eyes? We don't know. Ask him. He, he old enough to speak for himself. His parents, said, uh, his parents said this because they was afraid of the Jewish leaders who had already decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah was to be put out of the synagogue. This is why the parents said, ask him, he old enough. A second time, they summoned the man who was born blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. <laughs> we know this man is a sinner, talking about Jesus. He replied, <clears throat> the blind man said, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, what did he do to open your eyes? <laughs> they done asked him this about three times. He answered, I told you already, and you still not listening. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become one of his disciples too? Woo. <laughs> then they hurled insults at the man saying, you are one of this follow you, you are one of this fellow's disciples. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke through Moses, but as for this fellow, Jesus, we don't know where he comes from. The man answered, now this, the, the blind man answered, now this is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of the open of eyes of a blind man born blind. If this man was not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you will, you will step in seeing at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. <laughs> Jesus heard that they threw him out. And he found him and said, do you believe in the son of man? The blind man who could now see said, sir, who is he? The man asked, tell me so that, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking to you. <laughs> the man said, Lord, I believe and he worshiped him. Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into the world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with them heard him say this and asked, what? Are we blind too? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. Yeah. Like that. It was a blind man Jesus may see. <laughs> and it's people who got eyesight that think they can see, can't see a dang thing. Uh, I love it. I love it. People wonder why certain stuff happens. And some stuff happens for a reason. Why? People born blind, why stuff going? People don't don't, don't don't understand. It don't make sense on this side of the field. It never will. But God got it all figured out in His time. And uh, that's a nice chunk. I like that chunk. I like that chunk. All right. Yeah. Bless y'all for rocking with me. Y'all be patient with me. So I'm a little all over the place. Uh, Yeah, I can go there. I can go there. I can go there. All right. This junk called Remember the Law. <clears throat> Remember the Law. Right. Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Yeah, I'll bear with me. <laughs> they going crazy about that Tom Brady game last night. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, any any uh, Tom Brady fans out there, man, it's all good. We took an L. But, uh, <laughs> Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. 
uh, titled the, the Destruction of the Wicked. The Lord said through Brother Malachi, Behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yet, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubborn. And that day shall come and burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root or branch. But unto you that fear my name, the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the star. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under, your, under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. Verses 4 through 6 say, Remember the law of Moses. <clears throat> the Lord said through Brother Malachi, Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all of Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers. Least I come and smite the whole earth with a curse. <clears throat> Remember the law of Moses, my servant, the Lord said. He said, you shall not have no other gods before me. You shall not make idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. In Leviticus chapter 19, verses 17 through 18, the Lord said to us through brother Moses, the second greatest commandment, do not hate, verse 17 say, do not hate a fellow Israelite in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly, so you will not share in their guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people. For love your neighbor as yourself, I am the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 6, Brother Moses taught us the greatest commandment. Here it is. It says, Hear, O Israel, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. <clears throat> Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments I give you today are to be in your hearts. Amen. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, the Lord said, Consequently, check this. I believe Lord Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. The fulfillment of the law. Fulfillment means to fulfill. To fulfill means to carry out, to carry out, to carry through, to deliver, attain, to bring about. Lord Jesus said, don't think that I come to abolish the law, to put an end to it. The law or the prophets, <clears throat> I have come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill them. You see, Everything the Lord our God has ever commanded us to do is holy and without sin. Psalms 19, verse 7, Brother David said, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Romans chapter 7, verse 14, Brother uh, Paul said, we know, that, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual. I'm sold as a slave to sin. You see, the Lord our God knows we cannot carry out his laws on our own, but he does not want, but he does want them to be in our heart. He wants us to have the desire to do them. Psalms 19, verse 8, Brother David said, The precepts, a precept is a command, a commandment, the commandments, NLT, the New Living Translation, say, Of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Psalms 119, verse 136, saying, Streams of tears flow from my eyes, for your law is not obeyed. He wants us to desire to do his will, to keep his word, to wish to obey. He wants us to delight in his law, his word, commandments, statutes, and decrees. His laws, uh, they are good, truly. Psalms 119, 97 through 98 say, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it day and night. Your commands are always with me. They make me wiser than my enemies. <clears throat> Psalms 119, 119 verse 165 say, Great peace. <clears throat> Y'all, excuse me. Psalms 119 verse 165 say, Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. But we do stumble and fall short from time to time. It happens. But when you are holding on to God's word with all your heart, strength, and soul, there is a sense of joy, comfort, and peace. God knows that we are going to mess up, but still, I love this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 
verses 1 through 2, Brother Moses said, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and, and, accompany, if, and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Amen. That's all he wants us to do is to be obedient in our heart to him. Yes, we are, going, we are going to sin and fall short. There is only one who could fully carry out carry this out, and that's Jesus Christ our Savior. There are a few things we could do on our own, but even our best efforts to please God will fail. That's why he sent Jesus, his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Romans 7, verse 21 through 22 and 25, Brother Paul said, I want, I want to do good, but evil right here with me. In my inner being and my soul, I delight in God's law. But thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ. Right. And Jesus said, don't think, uh, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 20, Lord Jesus said, don't think I come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter or the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices these and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpass that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. <clears throat> All right. As y'all call, remember the law. Remember God's word. It's important. Keep God's word. I know I have none. Think I uh, think I knocked up and all already for that. Trying to pretty much go with that one. Um, I got another junk for you. Mm -hmm. I guess I can do that. Yeah, I guess I can do that. Jesus said in John 14, verses 15 through 17, he said, if you love me, keep my commands. And I'm going to ask the Father, and he'll give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world can't accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you see him and you know him because he lives with you and he will be in you. You see, he is talking about the Holy Spirit. Very important to have the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this might not make a whole lot of sense to you right now, but it's very important to have the Holy Spirit. I speak about it. How important is the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. How important is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost? Very right. bless y'all who rocking with me, patient with me. And, uh, God gonna do everything little by little. Don't nothing happen in uh twenty four seven or three six even me. It's still it's still struggles and stuff in my life that I still got going on too. You know what I mean? Like he's still helping me with like where as I help y'all, he's still helping me. If uh, not the teacher, preacher don't tell y'all that <laughs> where they don't Bible say all have sin. I ain't perfect. I'm not gonna be perfect. I'm about to talk to y'all about the Holy Spirit. I just wanna tell y'all that. Like where so y'all know. Just no, don't let no one look down on you or none of that stuff. Or don't say no. I ain't got no expectations of perfection. Or none of that stuff. I know I'm gonna mess up, like word, but it's all good. It is what it is. I just want to say that because uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit, when when you full of the Holy Spirit, man, it's simply you just got love for God in your heart and want to be obedient to Him. To sum it all up, where it ain't about gifts. It's different gifts and a whole lot of stuff, but it's all about having love of God in your heart and just want to do what he said. That's the sum it up. But how important is the Holy Spirit? Very important. Highly important. Bless you, Holy Spirit. Listen, First John chapter 5, verse 7, in the King James Version, it says, <clears throat> For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. I believe in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, the Word says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. 
and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, was hovering over the waters. God's word is spirit. His laws are spiritual. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and 14 say, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Verse 14 say, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. John chapter, I mean, Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33, the Lord said, I put my law in their minds and I'm going to write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Well, how are you going to do this? Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, the Lord said in the King James Version, Turn at my reproof, my, his rebuke, and I will pour out my spirit into you and I'll make known my words to you. If you accept God's word, he will pour out his spirit to you. And make known his words to you. If you follow the word, you are following the spirit of God's commands. You are doing what the spirit of God says in, in your heart and mind when we are following God's word. In a sense, we are following Jesus through the Holy Spirit, through God's commands, his word. We are being led by God's spirit through God's word. Romans 8 verse 14, Brother Paul said, those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. Verse 5 say, those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Verse 26, Brother Paul said, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. <laughs> Sometimes we don't even know what we ought to pray for. You know how it is when, you, <laughs> when you're going through something and you can feel it deep down on the inside. You want to cry out to something. Said the Holy Spirit praying for you, interceding for you. You ain't even saying a word. He's speaking for you. You don't even know it. You know how it feels sometimes. Bless the Lord. Uh, uh, John chapter 4, verse 24. King James Version say, God is spirit. That's what Lord Jesus said. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 6, verse 44 through 45, Lord Jesus said, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I raise them up at the last day. At the last day, It is written in the prophets, They will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. How? By the Holy Spirit. You see. John chapter 6, verse 63, Lord Jesus said, The Spirit gives life. The flesh comes for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. John chapter 7, verse 37. Lord Jesus uh, stood up to a crowd one day and told the people, Those who believe in me, uh, any man who thirsty, come and drink. And that scripture said, Those who believe, who believe in me, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. By this he meant the Holy Spirit. John 14 Verses 15 through 17, Lord Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. Same thing. You know, it, God is same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Uh, he don't change. You go to Exodus and read in the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> the Lord said, uh, he showed mercy to a thousand generations who love him and what? Keep his commandments. Same thing back then. Jesus said the same thing. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I ask the Father, he'll give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world can't accept him because it neither sees him or knows him. But you see him and you know him because he lived with you and he will be in you. John 15, uh, 26 through 27. I ain't got that one on my memory. So I'm going to kick that one. <laughs> Y'all bear with me. I say 15. 26-27. Lord Jesus said in John 15, verses 26-27, But when the Comforter come, who I will send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceed from the Father, he will testify about me, and you will also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Yeah, John 16, verses 5-6. through 6, Jesus said, John chapter 16, verses 5 through 6, 16. Jesus said, I go away 
And none of you ask me where I go. Because I said these things, you are filled with sorrow in your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is good that I go away. For if I do not go away, the comfort of the Holy Ghost will not come to you. But if I depart, he will come to you. And when he comes, he will uh, reprove the world about sin and righteousness and judgment. A sin because they don't believe in me. A righteousness because I go to my Father and you will see me no more. And a judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have many things to say to you, but you cannot handle them right now. <laughs> However, when the spirit of truth comes, he, he will come and guide you into all truth. For he won't speak of his own. Whatever he shall hear, he, that will he speak. And he will show you all things. He will glorify me. He shall receive of mine and show it to you. All things the Father have are mine. Therefore, I said he shall take of mine and show it to you. The Holy Spirit leads us, guides us, and teaches us about Jesus. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Brother Paul said, uh, The natural man can't accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. I can read that to you, too. Y'all bear with me. I ain't write this down. I was tired when I did write this. <laughs> but it's all good. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 6 through 18. Yeah. It says, Paul said, However, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, not the wisdom of this world or the princes of this world. Uh, but we speak wisdom from God, a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world to our glory, which none of the prophets in this world, uh, princes of this world knew. For if they did, they would not have crucified Lord Jesus, the King of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, it has not entered the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them who love them. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For what no man knows, the things of a man, no man knows the things of his inner being except his spirit. So even so, no one knows the things of God, but the spirit of God. Now we receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is from God that we might know the things that are freely given to us, our God, to us of God. And we speak things also, we speak not of the world, words which man's, we don't speak the things that men teach, but things which come from the Holy Ghost, comparing spiritual things with unspiritual. Uh, Verse 14 say, the natural man can't accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness. Neither can they know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who knows the mind of the Lord that he may instruct them? But we have the mind of Christ. Right. <clears throat> Some people might not understand, uh, might not understand everything. I heard someone say that, uh, that people not going to understand everything. That's why quite often people look at people like they crazy and it don't make a lot of sense. It says right there, without the Holy Spirit, it doesn't make sense to the natural people. Right. You could be talking to me. If it was four years ago, you was talking to me about Jesus. And where? Without it, I, I got people who know who Jesus is. And I, I look at them. I look at them like they crazy. <laughs> where? Without the Holy Spirit, it doesn't make sense. That's a fact. <laughs> Well, yeah, bless, uh, bless the Lord. It's very important uh, in all the spirit for the sermon, man. Need him. He the one to lead us and guide us to Jesus. He's doing it now. Well, if y'all pay attention, show sure lead me. It's a lot of things I want to do. Sometimes, uh, <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> that's another story for another day. All right. I can do this chunk uh, real quick for us. All right. Hope y'all having a good day, man. All right. Watch y'all being patient with me. I'm just like y'all. I can do that show I want to without smoking and cussing and anything and all that stuff, but I ain't going to put on no front. I'm going to stop smoking one day to get right. There's a lot of things I want to stop doing. Paul said things I want to do, I don't do. Things I don't want to do, I keep on doing. But in my inner being, I do the light in God's law. Word up. Paul said, who going to save me from this body? Blessed be God who delivers me through Jesus Christ. Word. Even if people don't smoke, don't drink, they still doing something that they, word, word. 
You ain't got to smoke or drink still. Something you don't want to do, you do not If you admit the truth. It's all good. We're going to get that. We're going to get that. All right. I kicked this strong to go. It's still herb. I kicked this strong. All right. 27 years old. Uh, I'm 27 years old. I'm a Jewish Muslim Christian. People wonder, people ask, a couple people ask me like what I believe in and stuff like that. Um, I got it right here. Tell the people, I'm a Jewish Christian, I'm a Jewish Muslim Christian. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, the one and only true son of God who gave his life for me and for you, who rose three days later from the grave and is currently at the right hand of God, at the throne, at the throne of God. I'm a follower of my Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian, but I have Jewish and Muslim in my family. Well, Abraham was the first Jewish man. Christianity starts with Jesus Christ and Ishmael. Christianity starts with Jesus Christ. And Ishmael was the son of Abraham, the first Muslim. Judaism starts with Abraham. Christianity starts with Jesus Christ. Islam starts with Ishmael, the son of Abraham. Abraham, Ishmael, and Jesus Christ are related to each other. Truly they are. Abraham is the first Jewish man, a Hebrew man. Jesus Christ is Christian. It's all about him. Lord Jesus was a Jewish man himself. He comes from the tribe of Judah. Ishmael was Abraham's first son. Ishmael is the grandfather of the prophet Muhammad of Islam. I said I'm a Jewish Christian Muslim. I'm a Jewish Muslim Christian. I'm not confused. I just know who my family is. I'm not ignorant of who we are or where I come from. I come from Jewish Muslim Christian people. Yes. Well, we all know God is still keeping his word, his covenant, and his promises to Abraham. Thank you. I'm a follower and a child of Abraham. Romans 9 verse 8, Brother Paul said, This, this means that Abraham's physical descendants are not necessarily the children of God. Only the children of the promise are considered to be Abraham's children. Thank you. Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. The NIV say, The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you, and I will make you into a great nation. And I bless you, and I will make your name great. You will be a blessing. I bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I curse. And all peoples. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Judaism, the Jews, Christianity, the Christians, even Jesus Christ, Islam, the Muslims, all the knowledge, Abraham, as one honored by God Almighty himself. Yes, Abraham is blessed by God Almighty and is important to all three religions. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam come through Abraham. All peoples, the Lord said, will be blessed through you. <coughs> From Abraham, Lord Jesus came through. I'm a follower and child of Jesus Christ too. John 3, 16, Brother John said, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 14, verse 6, Lord Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to get to the Father God Almighty himself. If anyone has ever came into contact with God Almighty, it was through Jesus Christ intervening, intervening, interceding. Jesus Christ is able to provide a way. His ways are not our ways. He can speak through fire. Ask Moses. He can shut the mouths of lions. Ask Daniel. He can split the sea. Ask Moses. He can speak through a donkey. Ask the lion. We have a human spirit. We understand this. Well, God Almighty has a Holy Spirit. Do you understand this? Well, he has the Holy Spirit which Jesus Christ operates through. Nevertheless, Lord Jesus said he is the only way to the Father, and he is correct. Listen, John chapter 6, verse 45, Lord Jesus said, It is written in the prophets. They will, they will, it is written in the prophets. They will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. Everyone. Abraham learned about God. And came to Jesus. 
John chapter 8, verses 56 and 58, Lord Jesus said to some Jews who claimed they were Abraham's children, Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of, my, of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. Very truly, I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. Thank you. Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing Jesus. John 14, verses 15 through 17, Lord Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he lived with you, and he will be in you. Thank you. I'm a follower. And listen to my brother. I'm a follower and listen to my brother, the prophet Muhammad. Yeah. In the Holy Quran, the Surah As Sab 6, it reads, uh, And remember Jesus, the son of Mary, O children of Israel. I'm the messenger of Allah, uh, sent to you, confirming the law, which came before me, and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad. But when he came to them with these clear signs, they said, This was evident sorcery. When the Prophet Muhammad came to the people 1,500 years ago, they didn't believe the Prophet Muhammad. In fact, uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's another Muhammad called, uh, y'all probably seen him in the movie, the, the boxing movie, Ali. That's uh, the honor of Muhammad. He was born in Georgia, 1970. That's what the people listen and follow now. The Prophet Muhammad was born 1,500 years ago. Why well, he the one who started this. And they don't listen to him now. They go by others' teachings. Like, where? They don't, they don't listen to him now. They should be listening to him. The Prophet Muhammad wrote a, a final sermon before he died. He said, all praise is due to Allah. So we praise him and seek his pardon. And we turn to him. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils of ourselves and from the evil consequences of our deeds. Whom Allah guides all right. There is none to lead him astray. I will bear witness that there is no God but Allah. Now, keep in mind that they speak Arabic. Allah, it means God. They just speak Arabic. We speak English. Good morning, Nancy. They know, he know what he's talking about. If they was to come over here, they'd be speaking English. We was born over there, we'd be speaking. We was born in China, we'd be saying another different word. I could say hi, I'm saying hi. And uh, Mexican is Buenos Dias. Word, word. But don't, don't, don't lose me. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one having no partner with him. He is sovereignty. And to him is due all praise. He grants life and causes death and is powerful over everything. There is no God but Allah, the one. He fulfilled his promise and granted victory to his bondsmen. And he alone routed the enemies of Islam. O oh, people, lend me an attentive ear. For I do not know whether after this year I shall ever be among you again. Therefore, listen to what I'm saying to you carefully. And take these words. Uh, take these words who could not be with you who cannot be with me present today. O oh, people, just as you regard this month one day, this city is sacred. So regard the life and property of every Muslim as a sacred trust. Return the goods entrusted to you to their rightful owners. Hurt no one so that, that no one may hurt you. Remember that you will indeed meet your Lord and that he will indeed reckon your deeds. Allah has forbidden you to take usury, interest. Therefore, all interest obligations shall henceforth be waived. Beware of Satan for the safety of your religion. He has lost all hope that he will ever be able to lead you astray in big things. So beware of following him astray in small things. O people, it is true that you have certain rights with regard to your women, but they also have rights over you. If they abide to be your right, then to them belongs the right to be fed and clothed in kindness. Do treat your women well and be kind to them, for they are your partners and committed helpers. As it is, you're right that they do not make friends with anyone whom you do not approve, as well as do not commit adultery. O oh, people, listen to me in earnest worship. Um, it says, say your prayers, fasten, and uh, perform the zakat, perform has. If you can afford to. You know that every Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. All mankind is from Adam and Eve. And Arab has no superiority over, 
over a non a rap nor does a non a rap has any superiority over an a rap also a white has no superiority over, over a black nor does a black has any superiority over a white except by pity pity means the quality of being religious or reverent and good deeds and good action learn that every muslim is a brother to every muslim and that the muslims uh, constitute one brotherhood. Nothing shall be legitimate to a Muslim that belongs to a fellow Muslim unless it was given freely and willingly. Do not therefore do injustice to yourselves. Remember one day you will meet God and answer your deeds. So beware, do not stray from the path of righteousness after I'm gone. O people, no prophet or apostle will come to me and no new faith will be born. Reasons therefore, O people, and understand my words I convey to you. I will leave behind two things, the Quran and my example. If you follow these, you won't go astray. All those who listen to me shall pass on my words to others and those again to others. And may the last ones understand my words better than those who listen to me directly. Rest in peace, brother. When he spoke, they didn't understand him. 1,500 years ago, they didn't understand him. My, the prophet Muhammad believed in Jesus. Rest in peace, my brother. The Prophet Muhammad did what the Lord our God asked of him. The Prophet Muhammad was obedient to God Almighty, our Father, Abba, the Holy One, the Creator, Allah, the Maker of heaven of earth. Adam, Adam knew him as the Lord God. Abraham knew him as God Almighty. Moses, uh, they call him Musa in the uh, Holy Quran. They know him. He knew him as the Lord God Jehovah. He has many names. He speaks many languages. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 say, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also made the universe. The sun is the radiance, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Thank you. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are all three religions started by God, and all three point to Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Messenger of God. In Judaism, the Jewish faith, Lord Jesus is the Messiah. In Christianity, the Christian faith, Lord Jesus is the Son of God, the one and only sent by God, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. In Islam, the Muslim faith, Lord Jesus, is the messenger of God, and indeed, he is titled as a prophet in Islam. And they do not rule out Jesus. He is just not considered the son of God, but he is a prophet to them. Now, the Quran states that people who attack or even ignore the prophets will be cursed by Allah. All prophets receive the same message about being one God, which shows them that Allah is unchanging. Muslims believe that Muhammad was the final prophet. Prophets... Muslims believe and accept all the prophets mentioned in the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran. Thank you. <clears throat> in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Adam, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, King David, and the prophet Muhammad are highly important and treated with respect, and they are not to be ignored. In Judaism, it points to Jesus coming. Christianity, Jesus was born and taught us he was crucified and resurrected. In Islam, Jesus is the messenger of Allah. Listen to what Jesus says. The Holy Quran says, remember Jesus, the son of Mary. The prophet Muhammad accepted Jesus Christ. He was a believer in Jesus Christ. The prophet Muhammad mentioned Jesus. The prophet Muhammad knew who Jesus was. God sent the angel to Gabriel in Luke chapter 1, 26 through 28. The Lord sent the angel Gabriel to Mary to a virgin pledged to be named to a man named Joseph. Uh, the angel told him about Jesus, the son of the most high. Uh, he gonna be, uh, Mary said, how would this be? And the angel Gabriel said, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. Well, one day the prophet Muhammad was in the cave uh, in Mount Har Har near Mecca. God sent the angel Gabriel to him in his cave, who revealed to him the beginnings of what would later become the Quran. Muslims believe that the Quran the central religious text of Islam was revealed to Muhammad by God and that Muhammad was sent to restore Islam, which they believed did not originate with Muhammad, but is unaltered, 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 but is the true unaltered original monastic faith of Adam, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, and other prophets. 
The prophet Muhammad taught about Adam, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. I am a child of Abraham, a follower and believer in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I'm a follower of the prophet Muhammad, who taught about Adam, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. The prophet Muhammad believed in Jesus. So do I. Jesus Christ is the messenger of Allah, the only way. There is no other way to heaven but through God and the, the way God pervaded. Uh, the way God provides through Jesus Christ. Word. All you got to do is go back and look where we come from. Somewhere it should point to Jesus if there's any truth in it. If it ain't no truth in it, you should see it clear as day. Black is white. Word. But uh, that's just a little something. I ain't going to hold y'all up too much. Nope, y'all. Have a uh, good day, good uh, week. Y'all keep waking up praying, man. Stay in the word as much as y'all can. Because we live in the active world out there. It'd be crazy sometimes. <laughs> Why not? But it's all good. It's all good. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. Say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. Which means acknowledge. And he will direct your paths. All right. Keep looking to the Lord. Keep praying. Y'all pray for me. I pray for y'all. May God bless y'all. I see y'all tomorrow. Lord's will. Hope y'all have a good day.